This is Helping of Happiness, episode number 110. Today we're talking to Jenna Kim Jones, and we are going to have a little laughter break. Hi, you're listening to Helping of Happiness. I'm your host, Hilary Hess, a crazy mom of seven kids who loves to eat and loves to travel. Mom life can be exhausting, hectic, and scary at times. So let's take this journey together. We can love, we can learn, we can laugh, we can cry, and we can become better friends while we're at it. Hello, and welcome back to the podcast. We are so excited to introduce you to our guest today. We get to have Jenna Kim Jones with us. She is an American comedian and podcaster. You may also have seen her doing on-camera narration for the documentary film called Meet the Mormons back in 2014. She currently hosts a daily podcast called Couple Friends with her husband, hashtag Al, and we're super excited to have her on. Jenna is special to us because she is going to be at the mom break experience with us in September and we hope that you will grab your tickets and come join us as well September and 18th and 19th it's held in the Salt Lake City Utah area in Lehigh at the Hilton Garden Inn and it's going to be a Friday night and a Saturday and so much fun so much laughing I can't wait for you to get to know Jenna and link to our mom break experience will be in our show notes so that you can grab those tickets and be with us there we can't wait to see you meet Jenna Jenna how are you I am good. So good. I'm, this is just so fun to talk to you. I feel like we're already instant friends because you know my sister, which was so fun. So crazy. And I'm just so excited that we get to work together on the mom break experience that is coming up. And so let's introduce you as one of our presenters. You're oh, going to be yes. our in-house comedian. So <laughs> we're very excited about that. So I'd love to hear all about your family, about your growing up. I even was looking you up on Wikipedia today. You're on Wikipedia. That is really pretty amazing. It's, you know, when that Wikipedia page popped up, I really, my husband and I, we both looked at each other. I think I've made it. I think this, <laughs> this is it. There's a Wikipedia page. What more can I do? You know? <laughs> But it was so fun to learn about you. So let's, but I, that's like such big milestones in your life. So let's hear about the real you. They can go Google you and Wikipedia after we talk about this, but let's hear what's going on with you and your family right now. Of course. So I am, uh, Jenna, Jenna Kim Jones. I got three names and, uh, four, if you count my married name, but I keep that one. That's my like alter ego name. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the name I use at church, you know? So that's, that's a different name. Um, but I am married. I have two children. They are two and four years old and we live in Atlanta, Georgia, which is a place I never imagined I would ever live. I like knew nothing about the South. I've always lived West. Well, actually I lived overseas. I lived West and then I lived <laughs> in New York for like eight years. I knew and you I was, were in New York cause that's where I you met like, my Heidi. Yeah, exactly. I was a total city kitty uh, loved the big hustle bustle, lived in Los Angeles. So then we decided like, let's just move to a small town outside of Atlanta, <laughs> which was super crazy, but we Why love not? it. We oh, love I it. bet it's so nice. Yes. It's beautiful. It's a perfect place for our kids. We're 20 minutes from the airport, which is great for my career as a stand-up comedian and performer. Cause I can get out of town really fast and come home as fast as I can. Um, so and get away is, from that hustle and bustle. I bet that's so nice to have kind of like your country living where you can get away for a little while, right? Yes. We have trees. I love trees. And that was one thing always living in cities where I'm like, there's just no trees anywhere. There's never <laughs> trees. And even out West, when you live in the mountains, cause I grew up in Utah a little bit. There's not a lot of trees. It's not a lot of trees, yeah. right? It's a weird, it's weird. So I love trees and when I moved to the east coast I'm like this is what I've been looking for so Georgia was nice because boy we have it's just trees everywhere all the time I mean so it's crazy. and also probably all the bugs that's probably a big change yeah, from that's, <laughs> that's been tough I've been that's been a really weird one because I I grew up with a mother who's not afraid of bugs at all she like she'll see a spider and like smash it with her hand and be like 
took care of it. Meanwhile, <laughs> I'm like a little like, oh, I don't love it. And then I moved to New York and it was like roaches and like, oh, I can't. <laughs> and then, so I have these two daughters and my mom always raised me like, we're not afraid of stuff. You're not afraid of anything, right? So then I moved to the South. I have two kids and the bugs here, they're not bugs that are normal. It's they're like, like creatures. <laughs> yeah, they're like giant alien things that you've never seen before and they show up and they get in your face and they're not afraid of you. And so it's really hard to teach your two-year-old and your four-year-old that we're not afraid of bugs when you're like, <laughs> when you're like, it's fine, it's fine, I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid, all the time, every time you see a bug. So you're like, you can't even, I mean, it's really hard to be screaming about a bug, but also telling them we're not afraid <laughs> while I'm screaming. They're not <laughs> learning from your example on this It's one. really, it's not effective. It's not effective at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh I love it so much I feel the same way in Texas we have so many critters too oh, yeah, Texas oh, it's is just, bad. yeah mm, it's yeah. crazy especially right now I think they thought bugs because they're all waking up right now that it's getting hot it's, yep they're everywhere but yeah <laughs> it's so noisy it's so noisy it's so noisy that's yeah. one thing that was a big shocker for me like yeah. if you go walking at night it's like wee, 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 all the so yeah it's loud. crazy Okay, so comedian, mom, podcaster, yes. performer, so many hats. <laughs> like, yes. how do you kind of juggle all these things and mesh these different lives? Because really, you don't think of a mama being a stand-up comedian. That's just not really something that you think of going hand to hand. I know, but I feel like more moms, we are realizing how ridiculously weird and funny being a mother is I mean <laughs> truly especially now in quarantine you're like oh my gosh how is this happening all the time so um yes I'm a stand-up comedian that came first you know I started doing stand-up about 10 years ago before I met my husband before I left New York and loved it fell in love with it and once I got married I just kept going and trying and my husband's super supportive and I started awesome. to actually like make money from it and not like, you know, beg for stage time, which was this huge shift. Oh and yeah. Like an amazing moment for me with just because, you know, you just, you never know that you're going to get there when you start doing stand up. Um, so that was really cool. And stand up is really my one true love, but because I am a mom and because I really am surprised how much I enjoy being a mom and love my children. <laughs> That's that actually surprise, pretty amazing. But, you know, you have these kids and you think, I, this is so bizarre. I mean, it's just a, it's a weird thing that happens. You have this little person come into your life and you love them so much. And so I realized quickly that I wasn't going to be able to do stand up as much as I would have wanted to. I can't leave all the time. I can't be on my own schedule. I have humans that need me and uh, I want to be around them. So mm -hmm. I don't do stand up as much as I would love to do it. I would love to be gone more, but I, I am at a point in my career where I can just pick and choose the shows that I feel like I want to do and that are important and good for the career, but also balance being home. Podcasting has been a major support as far as I feel like I'm being creative and I get to do a cool project, um, but I can stay home and the kids are just asleep down the hall. So that's really been a fun outlet for me. And my, our podcast has evolved. I used to have a podcast called Sorry Not Sorry that was a little more sassy. My husband and I, we didn't have kids and he's my co-host and we just talk about whatever we want. And now we've moved on. We have a new podcast. It's called Couple Friends. and Which is super fun. I love that you do it with your husband. It's just such a fun so dynamic. Fun. Yeah. We have the best time. We get to spend time together. And you can um, tell that you're having the best time. Like when I listen, I'm like, you. they are having so much fun together. I love that they can do this. It's just super fun. We have a good dynamic. My husband is funny. In fact, sometimes he's too funny. Like, I feel like he's <laughs> like, hey, you're taking my thing. I don't like it. You got to cool stealing my thunder. Jokes. Would you stop yeah. it? <laughs> I'm the so, funny one. <laughs> exactly. Hello. So we do a podcast. It's a daily show, but it's only 10 to 15 minutes. And we decided that when we came back as this new podcast, we really just wanted to be like that break in your life. Like that podcast where you know you've listened to your politics or your murder or your other intense stuff and you're like I just need a minute to just 
be silly and be myself and not be stressed out. And that's what our podcast is. It's every day has a your theme. silly news segments are <laughs> cracking me up because it's real news, but it's like the craziest things ever. So you can't help but just laugh at it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think today in our uh, what in this week in our show, we talked about a lady who fought a fox. Oh yeah, and, the fox one. You know, I, I mean, just one. we ta- we find the news that we want to talk about. None <laughs> of the heavy it. stuff, okay? The big news to us. So <laughs> you know, we're. <laughs> Every day is different and it's a little break and I like it because I've, I'm always looking for a podcast that I can just enjoy while I'm doing the dishes or when I'm folding laundry or when I'm just taking a minute to just, you know, be myself. So we, we have enjoyed that. And I, we also like that, you know, it's, our podcast is not for kids, but if a kid walked in the room, you wouldn't need to run and turn it off. You're like, let's stick in the headphones. Yeah. (laughs) Right. That, that we, we tried to make a show that is for adults, but if a kid is around, they can consume it and not, you know, have a lot of questions. (laughs) (laughs) We don't need those kinds of talks. We're already together enough as it is. Exactly. (laughs) Oh, I love it. So, I guess that the best thing maybe about mom life and being a comedian and podcaster is that it gives you material. Is that kind of what you're saying? (laughs) Yes. So much material all day long. It's, it's ridiculous. Probably not something that you ever thought that that would be. I don't know. Before I had kids, I felt like mom life was just going to be like babysitting all the time. And I was a little worried about that, which I mean, it it has its moments for sure, (laughs) but I definitely like my kids better than I liked the kids I babysat growing up. Oh yeah. That's, that's a definite perk of motherhood. There's a, that uh, unspoken love that you just, (laughs) you can't shake it. It's this weird thing. Uh, Material is amazing. It's funny because when I started doing standup, I was very single. And then I got married and all of a sudden went, oh, shoot, I have to like write all new jokes because I'm (laughs) married now. Can't be going around telling single jokes when I'm a married lady. (laughs) So then I had to figure out what is being a comedian as a married person. And then the same exact thing happened when I had my first daughter, Samantha. I went like, oh, shoot. Now I have like, I got to, I got to figure out who I am again. And that has been a really fun, exhausting, different hard journey as I write jokes and figure out what I want to tell jokes about um, because it, you're j- my life is just constantly evolving and you have to evolve with it. And you have such a life that your work life evolves with your mother life, which that isn't always the case for everybody, right? Because some jobs, if you're an engineer, your engineer life is always going to be engineer life. You're not going to be engineer with the kid twist. I mean, I guess if you need more flexible hours or something like that, but right. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, and so much of my life is you into and my your, comedy. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It totally does. And <clears throat> there's nothing you can do about it. I told my I told my husband like, "Sorry, if we get married, bud, there's going to be jokes. It's there's going to be jokes about you and you're going to have to be okay with that." And now his favorite thing to do is one of the most common questions he gets asked every time we d- we meet new people or whatever. They say like, oh my gosh, you're married to a comedian. Is it just like so great? Is it so fun all the time? And his response always is, it's not as funny as you think. <laughs> so, so he really just loves to just throw me under the bus. It's not funny. <laughs> That's his way of getting you back. <laughs> totally, totally. And you know, and he is, I always laugh. He's like one of the worst audience members. Um, and I figured this out early when we were dating. Because I'd be like, you're not, he doesn't laugh. He is, he's one of those people that goes like, oh, that was, that was funny. Like, no, buddy, you got to laugh out loud. That's the bargain. That is what we sign up for when we go to a comedy club. I tell a joke, you laugh out loud. You You need me in your audience. I love to laugh out loud. When we go to movies, I feel like me and my husband are the only ones laughing in the theater. We're always looking around like, oh. But it's funny. You have to laugh out loud. You got to laugh out loud. Yes. You have to. You have to. Okay, so we're in this COVID crisis, which is probably just spinning your work life because you're not oh, flying yeah. anywhere, right? I can't go anywhere. Yeah, I, I am. So, I'm. What is this like? What are your biggest pain points? You're here at home with all your kids. What's what's happening with all this? Well, it's really been a massive shift for our whole family. I spent a ton of time on the road last year 
However, because I was busy, do I, I host a little TV show. I've got stand up that I do. And I had the opportunity last year to take my kids with me on the majority of my trips. Oh, that's really cool. That is it was really amazing. Cool. I either had my mom to help me, sometimes my husband, sometimes it would just work out that we were going somewhere where I had family or friends or whatever it was. And my, fr- my daughters, they came with me and spent the majority of the time with me. Um, so we were on the road all the time and they are amazing travelers. They got status on the airline. They got, like the flight attendant would be like, wait a minute, what? What's happening? <laughs> like, this like two-year-old walks on the airplane. She's like, give me the iPad, mom. Like she just <laughs> knew what to do. And um, we got used to it. And then COVID came and just slapped us in the face. And suddenly we weren't going anywhere. And my girls have, it has been an emotional journey for them and watching them and trying to help them and under tell them you know, what's going on and not scare them, but let them know, like, Mm -hmm. you know, we just can't go anywhere. And I think that they have asked the first like three weeks or so, four weeks, it was every day. When are we going somewhere? When do we get to go somewhere? (laughs) It's so hard. It's so hard. And, you know, they, um, even they got used to a lot of different things that most little kids aren't used to hotel rooms, rental cars. And I had, like, I grabbed a towel and it was a white towel to wrap around my daughter and we don't have a lot of white towels. We have lots of other colors. And she looked at the white towel and she wrapped it around herself and she went, Ooh, like a hotel. (laughs) I'm like, Oh my gosh, my children are, (laughs) they're trying to relive the life they had. (laughs) Oh, that is hilarious. They really, it's been a massive shift. And my four year old was in just like a couple days a week. Um, like a pre preschool. Mm -hmm. She starts preschool in the fall, but just something to get her social and to have friends. And she loved it. And when that stopped, that was a massive blow to her, you know, social life and her confidence um, and really her independence. I saw like a big change in like, she got frustrated a lot more quickly because she didn't have this outlet of feeling like a Mm -hmm. big girl. And um, it has been really, really, um, it's been okay. I mean, I really think we're okay. And we're very lucky. My husband is still working, which I feel really grateful for. There's a lot of things that I'm really grateful for, but, um, just the emotional, there's an emotions have really run high in our house and been very roller coaster. And I, I actually, I mean, I'm not used to not working. So a little piece of me struggled because Mm -hmm. I just went like, Oh no, what's my identity? Who am I? Am I, am I going to make it out of this? Am I, and I, it's, it feels like silly really when I really think about it and look at it, I haven't changed. I'm still who I am. But that little piece of me that, you know, felt that, you know, uh, fulfillment of, I checked that off the box. I did that show. I told that joke and it worked was gone. And I've had to really adjust and kind of figure out what to do. And things are changing even already. I mean, I I got an offer maybe for a potential show on Zoom. So, you know, things are shifting and I don't think stand-up is gone. I think we'll all be back together in a couple of months and and life will will, will go on. But it has been um, a little bit eye-opening of like, you need to have some confidence in who you are. You need to feel fulfilled in, you know, a non-work way. Um, I learned I have zero hobbies. That's really. Because <laughs> when do you have time for a hobby when you yeah. work so much and then you're a mom, you just don't. You don't have hobbies. Yeah. 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 I'm like, everyone's like, well, you should do something. What do you love to do? I'm like, uh, I, I mean, I kind of loved just to tell jokes and change diapers. I mean, that was kind of what I loved. <laughs> I kind of love changing diapers. I mean, diapers. I loved it's it. Like the best. So. <laughs> <laughs> it is hard though. And I think even moms that aren't working find themselves in that identity at a certain point where, you know, a lot of times I think as the kids are starting to get a little bit more independent and you're like, well, I don't know. I don't even know what I like to do. That's sometimes right. the hardest question. If you have like those questionnaires about yourself, what are your hobbies? And you're kind of stumped. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. What are hobbies? Like when have I ever right, had time really. for a hobby? Exactly. Yeah. And I think too, with school and friendships, with your children's friendships, with your adult friendships, to have those taken away, 
I mean, you're really 24 seven momming it. There's no like <laughs> emotional break. And that was a huge yes. shock to the system. There's like, no going to the park and at least like commiserating with that mom friend while yes. the kids play. Yeah. Yes. That's been super different for us too. Yeah. No Chick-fil-A play dates where you just sit there for two hours. Oh yeah. And refill your drink and your kids are like, this is the greatest. I'm and so your happy. servers tell you it's such a pleasure to help you yes. and serve you the whole time. Exactly. <laughs> they think you're wonderful. You think they're wonderful. It's a whole thing. <laughs> It's been, uh, yeah, and I think the first few weeks I was very, like, I, I was teasing that I'm the most extra mom ever all of a sudden. <laughs> we were doing everything. I was making pinatas. And oh, yes. And all the stuff, and I've toned it down a little bit. Now mm -hmm. we do, like, one or two projects, and then we watch a little TV, and then we go outside, and then we, th you know, throw water balloons, and we, we have our things and workbooks and whatever we're doing, but it it's it's been... It's been it kind of felt like, at least for us, like the three ring circus at the beginning of the, well, first yeah. I went into project mode. It was like, okay, we maybe just have, because we were on spring break when it hit. So it was mm. one more week, you'll be off. So we're like, okay, that week we're off. We're just going to get all our home projects done. It's going to be amazing. And we started whipping through all this stuff. And then we kind of burned out of all of yes. that because we were just like, how long are we going to be in here? And <laughs> online school started and that was a little crazy. And mm -hmm. my daughter's coming home from college. And so that kind of shifted everything crazy. And then it was like just gritting our teeth. <laughs> we didn't do anything much, but watch movies every night. And Which then it was fine. this, and then it was this new wave. It was like, okay, we're going to be doing this for a while. The creative mom came back out again and I was doing all these things. And then I'm right now I'm kind of like, okay, I think yeah. I just need a breather. Let's go back to watching movies every night. <laughs> I think I'm at that point too. We're, we've done more, a little more movies, a little more like let's just sit outside. We'll turn mm -hmm. the sprinkler on. See what oh yeah. Happens. Oh yeah. A lot of that, you know, yeah. <laughs> a lot of that, a lot of that. <laughs> oh, it is. It's a total roller coaster. So, okay. So what have you been your biggest wins? What have you been the best part about all this for you? Are there any highlights? <laughs> oh, a lot of, uh, no, of course there has to be. Let's think, let's think through this. <laughs> what are the highlights? Um, lots of time with husband. That's nice. Yes, yes. You know, without, because uh, when we were doing a lot of traveling, we would go a week or two without seeing him and that was hard on us. And so lots of time at home with him. Projects have been a good thing. Yeah. I mean, I'm cleaning stuff that hasn't been cleaned in a while. Oh, seriously. Yeah. Yes. Like the light fixtures in my bathrooms. Yeah. When's the last time those have been cleaned? Maybe right. never. <laughs> I took our dining room chairs outside and like did a number on them and they oh, were so amazing. beautiful. And amazing. I mean, they're disgusting again, but. Because <laughs> it only takes one meal. <laughs> Gross again. <laughs> well, I made the really smart move. I washed them. They were great. And then like on day two, I'm like, let's make spaghetti. Like, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> huge mistake. Oh, we yeah. should have just had noodles. Only noodles. Right. No exactly. sauce. Exactly. <laughs> So oh. there's been good things like that. Great projects we have accomplished. And I think actually it has been good for me to sort of face having confidence in myself without work making me feel confident. That's been like a big thing where I've gone, you know what? I need to like be okay with who I am and what I'm doing and my mothering and all these things without having shows booked and flights planned and all of that. So I, it has been, even though it's been uncomfortable, probably a very good thing for me. Some, I heard somewhere, I can't remember where, there's so many things that flash up in my feed on social mm -hmm. media, right? But somewhere they were saying, this is the best part to be, best time to be introspective in your life because you just have yourself and you can really look inward at who you really are. And that has really stuck with me. I'm like, okay. I don't really have as much influence for my friends. I mean, we sure try to have some social distancing contact and things like that, but sure. not spending a lot of time with them. I'm not being the soccer mom or the basketball mom or the piano teacher or any of the things that used to give me, kind of like you were saying, comedian yeah. giving you an identity. It's like, I'm really trying to strip it back. What really is important to me? And that's been a big thing to think about. I haven't figured all of it out yet, but. Oh, me neither. Yeah. It's, I feel it's like definitely, I feel it. like it's taken this pandemic for me to slow down enough to actually even think about that. Yeah, 
absolutely. And I think a lot of people are in that headspace right now. A lot. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. going to be interesting to see how this all comes back. If we're all just going to be like, okay, that was a nice time. Let's get back to normal. <laughs> and how we were before, please. <laughs> or yeah, all, I don't know what it's going to be like. It's going to be really interesting, yeah. but anyway, how has your sense of humor gotten you through all of this? Oh, how has it? That's good. Well, even through um, mom life in general. Cause <laughs> I mean, really sometimes you just either have to laugh or you got to cry. There's not really a, well, yeah, before the, before the, before we started recording the show, I actually <laughs> told you the story, but I'll share it. I'm, I have no shame in my game. Uh, I have to learn to laugh. I was, we were on a walk. I had my two girls in the double stroller. I'm pushing them up the hill, huffing and puffing. And I'm lecturing them both because one of my daughters likes to bite her nails and the other one just likes to chew on everything anyway. And I'm just, (laughs) they lick everything they go by. They're like, there's a railing. We should lick it all the way down. Yeah. Yeah. We're puppies. We're puppies now. Oh, please. No, you're not puppies. Stop. So I'm giving this big, long lecture, please. We cannot put our hands in our mouth. We have to learn to not put our hands in our mouth. I'm talking to a two year and a four year old. Like no hands in your mouth. You may not put your hands in your mouth anymore. I'm trying to figure out ways to explain it. I've really overdone it. I've talked about it till I can't talk about it anymore. I look away for two seconds. I look back. They had their hands in each other's mouth. So they did it. I mean, they got the point. Don't put your hands in your mouth, but putting hands in each other's mouths is okay. So I really had to just go like, it's okay. We're going to be okay. I got to let it go. I'm Elsa. I'm Elsa. I let things go. Let it go. <laughs> that's who I am now. And I think that that's been nice to at least be able to take those moments when you're like, I just explained it. Okay. <laughs> to just laugh it off. It's no big deal. We're moving on. <laughs> Hopefully they're not still sticking their hands in each other's mouths when they're in their teen years, right? Yeah, we're just exactly. hoping that somehow we grow out of this, maybe. Yeah, that's what I tell myself when we're potty training, too. Oh, you yes. know, as long as she's not in diapers in high school, it'll be fine. We're good, right? Yeah. yeah, we're in the same boat. We tried potty training during quarantine with my three-year-old. Not happening. The first day, yeah. he's like, no, I don't want to go in that potty. But yeah. I am poopy, so you need to change me. Ooh, <laughs> it's like, yes. you know... Yeah, you can't. Oh, well, escape what it. can you do? You can't fight him. He just mm-hmm. knows. <laughs> oh, okay. So, what are you up to now that you've you've got your podcast? So, let's talk about yes. where we can find you with that because I don't even think we mentioned couple friends. We did friends, not. Did yes, we? I know. I talked about couple friends, but I did not. If you need just a little break in your life, check out couple friends. You can find it everywhere. Podcasts are available, but the easiest way, if you don't want to have to do the whole searching. Go to couplefriendspodcast.com and it, all the links and everything's there and you can see a picture of us. So you can imagine our faces <laughs> and you can just really, it's a silly, silly podcast. I mean, we've had an entire episode last week devoted to what your silverware drawer should look like. <laughs> oh, I haven't and listened to that one. I got to go back and hear that yeah, one. Yeah, we, it, there was a lot of freaking out. We posted a picture of our silverware drawer most of our listeners did not like it. They did not like it. <laughs> so we had to really hash it out. Um, it's just been, it's a great show. I hope you'll check it out. Couplefriendspodcast.com. We would love some new fun, happy listeners. We listen, we do voicemails from listeners. We do all kinds of fun stuff. So I, I really love the podcast and we're working hard to give people a break. I mean, I've had people reach out and go like, I just loved having a minute with your show in these last little while. You well, know? and it's nice because they're short. They're only like, yeah, what, 10, 20 10, minutes? 10 to 15. And oh. then you have this great Friday where you have everything together. So if you want to listen to it in the one big chunk that you can, which right. sometimes if I'm going to be scrubbing the bathtub and doing some other things for like an hour, then I want a nice long thing to listen to. But exactly. other times it's like, I'm just driving 10 minutes to the grocery store, but I want to not be thinking in my own you know, right anyway. yeah it's a good distraction so that's what we we pride ourselves on that you know we've had actually some criticism well you guys don't really I want more well that's not what we're here for we are here well, and you want to always leave people wanting more right that's the exactly. best time to walk off stage <laughs> you're right thank you <laughs> so yes we that's our ba- our biggest criticism is we just want more but trust me you don't want more 
We're giving you the best. Everything else is. <laughs> it's going to go off the rails if we go a little too long. Let's exactly be real. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. You can only handle this much of us as a couple friends. But yes, we are the couple friends you didn't know you needed, my husband and I. And we will be there for you, pandemic or not. We are podcasting. So. <laughs> well, I love it so much. So, okay. What else? Anything else that you wanted to share? No, just you know, follow me on social media and, and come, come on this pandemic journey with me. I mean, we are, I don't know what's going to happen. And I keep going back to just trying to be positive. You know, I mean, we are resilient people. Hard stuff happens all the time and just be positive. Lots of, I mean, there's a lot of people going through hard stuff and a pandemic. Yes, for sure. Be there for everybody and be nice and do our best. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. So, and everybody go buy tickets to the mom break so that they can come (gasps) see you and we can, I would love to give them all a big hug because in September we're going to be hugging again, right? That's what I keep telling myself. I hope so. Actually. And if for some reason it does get postponed, we will refund tickets and, or you can just hold on to them and we'll just postpone the event and you can do it. It's going to be great. I'm going to be there to tell jokes and I can't wait. I like, I am already (laughs) thinking about this show. Trust me. I am very excited. I also love performing for moms and women because I feel like we are an underrepresented part of the comedy world. Well, and And you can be yourself in a different way with a group of moms than you can with just a general audience, right? Yes. It is the best kind of fun. The most fun. Everybody's excited and relaxed and after this summer, we're all going to need a break. Oh, we are going to be, I'm already itching to get out and work this in May. I'm going to be dead by September. I so. know. Let's do it. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Okay. So do you mind answering my three helpful and happy Let's questions? Okay. So the Helping of Happiness blog covers food, travel, <laughs> which there's a lot of right now, and homemaking hacks, as well as housing the podcast archives. So this just kind of ties all of this into one little thing. So first question, we were talking about this a little bit before, we both love to talk about food. So this yeah. might be a hard question to nail down. What is your favorite food or meal? This is a tough one. I have two answers. My favorite food group is candy. <laughs> um, <laughs> Like, truthfully, if I could just skip a lot of foods, I would just like to eat different kinds of candy. I love, so are you like a chocolate candy? Or are you like a fruity candy? Because there's all, you know, different there opinions are, on I'm, that. I try not to discriminate, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really generous that way. I try to eat as much as I can. Um, but I, I mean, chocolate is by far the reigning champ. But I mean, I love a good Sour Patch Kid or a Mike and Ike or a hot tamale. You know, I like a good chewy candy, but I am a big chocolate gal. I just love sugar. Candy feels sort of like a, like if I was going to pick something to hoard, it would just be candy because it feels like comforting to know I have it. It's a real emotional thing. And it's um, been really emotional for me to try to step away from sugar during the COVID crisis oh, because right, I'm like, come on, I should have something comforting in my life. It's so hard. I know. Yeah. Yes. So candy, but then my husband, int- I had never had, I had never had um, carbonara. Like yes with bacon in it the pasta and yes. all the creamy like sauce creamy, eggy bacony carbonara I had never had that until I got married to my husband and he knows how to make it oh and I gotta be honest it is like my I don't I will I actually refuse to learn how to make it because there's something about it tastes better that he makes oh of have course to do it, it um and it's my favorite like when I just need that like feel good, hot, I don't care how many calories I'm consuming meal. It's been a rough day and I just need me a little bit of carbonara. I need a Let's little be carbonara. Real. Yeah, that's <laughs> like my, mm, yes. If you want to show me you love me, you're going to make me a little carbonara tonight. <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay, so you've also done a lot of traveling, which mm-hmm. has come to a screeching halt, but yes. Do you have a best trip or a dream vacation or both? Well, you know, 
I, it's funny. Our girls are four and two. And so we haven't done a lot of like great vacations with our kids because most of our vacation is spent visiting other family. Right. So I, we, we get a lot of that too. A lot yeah. of that. Um, but before we got married, no, not before we got married, after we got married, before we had kids, mm -hmm. we would do like this, we were in California and we would rent a little house out in Palm Springs and do like a fun just us weekend with no phones and that those weekends I still hang on to as magical memories <laughs> and then um after we had two kids because my daughters are less than two years apart and after we had them I was just we were tired and and we hadn't really gone anywhere or done anything or even seen any movies. And we had the opportunity to visit my sibling who lived in Korea. Oh, my gosh. And so my husband and I got on a plane. We got on a direct flight from Atlanta to Seoul. And we spent about, I mean, I don't even know if it was four days. We did a fast, fast, fast trip. And it was um, amazing. It was just the two of us. We fought through jet lag. We saw a beautiful, incredible things. We ate amazing food. We got all this yummy street food and just so much good stuff. And we, we think back on that trip a lot too. Oh, that yeah. is so wonderful. Well, and you appreciate that time so much yeah. when you haven't had it and you're like, oh, this it is was, just dreamy. I mean, we were excited to just sit on an airplane. Yes, together. seriously. I know. Just, just just hey, yeah. hey hi friend hi, yeah oh my goodness oh this I can amazing. read a book and not be interrupted every five minutes this is amazing yes so we yeah. loved that trip it, it was in the fall of 2018 and we still talk about yeah. it like remember yeah. this remember how tired we were and we didn't even care we just like slept whenever and it was amazing <laughs> oh that does yeah. sound dreamy oh awesome, I need to go though. to Korea <laughs> it is awesome what a cool place gorgeous big cities beautiful scenery. It was amazing. So cool. So cool. Okay. How about a homemaking hack? You got one? Oh. Well, here's my quarantine homemaking hack. So every day you wear the same clothes, right? I mean, oh, yes. Real. We all yes. have a uniform, right? Yeah. So what you do is you, you should wash them sometimes. And <laughs> what I do is have two pairs of black yoga pants. It'll be fine. <laughs> so you wash them and then you don't fold them. You just put them in a pile yes. and then everybody just gets their clothes out because we're all wearing the same outfit. Yes. So folding clothes, it's quarantine optional. Okay? <laughs> I love it. There's no reason to fold clothes right now. I won't have it. Another thing that I, I will say uh, a hack, I don't know if it's a hack, but for us, it's been really fun. We've done a lot of themed nights on um, our house. So like last night we did Christmas movie night and everyone wore Christmas pajamas and we watched a Christmas movie. Oh my gosh. I'm putting this on my list. That's so, so fun. So we've been living off of themes. Christmas movie night was a massive hit. Like the movie came on and both my daughters went, oh, <laughs> like they were just so happy. And we've done, we've done water day where we just like, Play in the water all day long in our front yard and we eat outside I mean so like, fun it's so like an outdoor day yes outdoor day we've done what else have we done um oh breakfast for every meal you have to get really oh creative. my gosh my kids would be obsessed with this they would love that right okay so, what did you eat tell me all these things oh yes yeah. so first breakfast was waffles Second breakfast was egg. I feel like we're hobbits or something here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, breakfast, breakfast, we did like uh, waffles with fruit. Uh, lunch, breakfast, we did eggs and sausage, kind of a more savory. Look, you can throw some veggies in there if you need right, to. Right, right. And then for dinner, breakfast, oh, we did cold cereal and smoothies. Oh, dreamy. Yeah. Oh, and we, and like, love I, this. right. And I, that's all their favorite foods. They don't want anything but breakfast. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. My kids were like, so what, what cereal can we have for dinner? I mean, it was like really great. So breakfast all day was a massive hit in our house. And you could, there's so much breakfast food you can like. Oh yeah. And I you love can, that you can go between the sweet and the savory for sure. You do breakfast yeah. burritos or something like that. Oh, that's yeah, super yeah, easy. Yeah. yeah. Muffins. Yeah. And like in the smoothies, you know, you throw in like a couple of green things and they don't know because it's oh, yeah. like berries yeah. and bananas and whatever. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So you can, you can slide in some healthy stuff. Well, I'll tell my kids, like, you know, in some countries they eat tomatoes and cucumbers for breakfast. So here is part of There your... you go. <laughs> International <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is so 
one. Okay. Yeah. What other ones? Did you do any other ones? Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think. Oh, dance party. We have a lot of dance parties and that has to, like where you just like random, like all of a sudden it's dancing time. And oh, you surprise I love them it. With it. So a lot of that. I'm trying to think what other ones we did. I'm sure we've done other ones, but those are the first few that came to my mind that were big hits. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Cause some of them at least, cause we've done a few themes. Mm-hmm. We've kind of slowed down, but we need to ramp it up because they're starting to look forward to that. I'm realizing yeah. that there's not a lot to look forward to right now, but if we have a theme night, it's like they're super pumped. Like for some yeah. reason they want to have Irish night so we can eat potatoes. I don't know. So <laughs> I'm like, okay, why don't you guys research some more things about Ireland? Cause apparently I don't really know anything about yeah, Ireland right? except for the either. leprechauns come and we wear green and we eat potatoes. So <laughs> But we've done The Amazing Race is really fun. And I sent them on a scavenger hunt. And then we went to the park and they had to do different things. And so, I mean, like, not the playground, but like the grass of the park. Totally. (laughs) totally. Um, We did Survivor. We had tribal council one night and we had to vote a winner. And so all week they were searching for immunity idols, which were just a paper necklace that they would wear around. So that was super fun. And if they had the immunity necklace and they got in trouble, then they were immune from the punishment. So they all really wanted that. It was oh, really that is hilarious. It was so That's funny. Great. It was really fun. We had Disneyland at home one day mm-hmm. and they did Splash Mountain down the stairs with the you know, <laughs> like the toddler mattress down yep. our oh, cardboard yeah. boxes and mm-hmm. they did and my both most of my big kids did this for my little kids, so it really wasn't me doing it. I just would say the theme and then they would just do everything, but yeah, like my great. one son dressed up as the Yeti and jumped out like at Matterhorn okay. and you know they it was just so I need to do more of this I'm so glad you brought these up because this is just making me go oh yeah I do want to do that again oh, yeah. that really was yeah. fun yeah we've done forts we've done oh obstacle courses oh lot of those. yeah good idea yeah a lot of obstacle course I put um like masking tape on the floor so you know, yeah it wouldn't leave marks or anything but like you know, if you're in this spot, you ha- the only way to get over there is you have to go this way. And then all day they do it. Oh, it's the best. Because they know like, oh, I have to, I can't go over there unless I tiptoe, you know, oh, whatever. Yeah. And- oh yeah. The lava is going to get you or something. Yeah, exactly. So we did this one that. fun thing. I forgot the, um, I don't know if you follow the backyard adventurers, but they have all these really fun ideas you can do in your own backyard. But one of their things that they did was that they opened like the window of their house and the kids would go in the backyard like they were in a drive through and she would hand them Play-Doh food like out the window and they just had like these cardboard box cars. My kids did it and we just did it with their bikes. But one of my kids, I didn't even do it for them. <laughs> they just did it for themselves. But one of my kids was making Play-Doh food in the house and then the other kids were on their bikes that driving through this so window awesome. and they did it for hours. It was like the best ever. I mean, what a great, so you yeah. got to do Play-Doh drive through It's like the well, easiest I'm, I'm thing ever. I'm already like, yeah, yeah, that's on the list now. Because <laughs> it's just, I know, it, you know, it's funny because I don't think we ever thought we would have to come up with all these ideas. But boy, am I grateful for other moms who are like, oh, hey, I did yes. that kind of thing. They're saving yes. me right now. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Even though I'm not with those other moms, all those ideas are. Yes. Oh, where would I be without all their inspiration? I'd be mm-hmm. a best. Mm-hmm. Oh, so awesome. Okay. Well, I guess I better let you get back to your life. (laughs) I'm like keeping you captive on here. I'm not letting you go. I don't want to face reality. (laughs) This has been so much fun. I can't wait to hang out in person at the mom break experience with family looking up at MB Nikki and lots of our other presenters will have all that in the show notes, but Anyway, you're just so awesome. And it's just been such a blast. I feel like I'm having my little after break right now with you just recording. Good, good. Thank you. I'm so glad. Thank you so much for having me. This was way fun. This was awesome. If you enjoyed this podcast with me and Jenna Kim Jones, then you better head over and get your ticket for the mom break experience that we're going to be having in September. We can't wait to have you with us. Grab a friend and share this episode with them to get them excited about the experience. And make sure that if you have a second to rate, review, and subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts. Those ratings and reviews are just so wonderful and help us move up the ranks. Thanks so much. Have a great week.